Welcome back to another edition of The Open Road. I'm your host, Alex LaFreese. I'm here with my good friend, Eric Edsel, who has brought along his 1958 Edsel Ranger. Edsel, as you guys might know, is a famous marquee from Ford, sort of most famous for its failure, but there was a lot of things that this car did well. Um, why did you choose an Edsel, and what do you like about it? Well, I guess the biggest factor, Alex, is the fact that my last name is Edsel, E-T-Z-E-L and the car is E-D-S-E-L. And through my whole life, people have associated my last name with the car. And so I thought, well, let's find one, buy one, own one, and use it as an enhancement to my real estate business. Sure. With name recognition and, and, and a marquee. Yeah. So the unique thing about the Edsel is that it is rare. However, it's a joy to drive and a joy to have because so many people come up to me and talk about it, remember something special of when they either first saw an Edsel or the guy they dated in high school who had one. I know there's a lot of other classic cars out there yeah. and I'm sure that the, the Bel Air and the Mustang guys and all would say, oh no, everybody makes a lot of attention of our car. This car gets attention unbelievably because of its uniqueness and its rarity. In fact, we just had a guy walk his dog by yeah, yeah. and say, did you buy that there? I remember the dealership in Spokane. Yeah. So that's what I like about it is its uniqueness, its familiarity with my name. All right, so what's the big Edsel like to drive? Well, it's really fun. You've got this huge steering wheel right in front of you, and this thing has to be felt to be believed. It is so big, and this huge front end just jutting out in front of you. Feels like you're just driving a complete boat. That being said, though, it doesn't drive that bad. You know, you get used to it pretty quickly. This particular car has a new master cylinder in the brakes, so the brakes are really touchy, so they're actually good at stopping the car at times a little too good you do have power brakes power steering so there isn't a whole lot of effort needed um, it's not the fastest car in the world I'm just gonna come out and say it uh, cruising around at 25 or 30 is great I would not want to take this on the freeway unless I absolutely had to these Edsels are relatively rare, but the values on them have stayed really reasonable. You could get a good Edsel for 10 grand and a really good one for 15, and you could not spend your money any better way. I can't tell you, driving this car around the streets of Spokane, how many smiles I've gotten, how many old ladies have given me thumbs up, and little kids are staring, and people know that this car is special you could spend a hundred grand on a new Porsche 911 and people wouldn't be as excited to see it they wouldn't have the smile on their face that they do when they see this whether they were around when this car was new or not they realize that it's special they realize that it's the embodiment of a time gone by and for that reason if you ever get the chance to get your hands on one of these big old cars from the 40s or 50s or you ever get the chance to drive one even like I did for just one day you have to do it because this car is just too cool the interior is so neat it's so classic 50s you've got this floating speedometer that turns and these retro gauges and this sort of two-tone interior it is really just a blast from the past the seats are that classic I don't even know the design it's the design you see in 50s cars and in ways there is so much room and in ways there's so little you know I'm, I'm closer to the steering wheel than I want to be but you could easily fit three full-size adults on the bench seats and another three in the back bench so in ways there's tons of room I've got all sorts of headroom and it's the whole car is so big it just tons of fun it, going over some bumps it rattles and shakes the whole car just feels alive it is so much fun 
also had a chance to meet the the designer of the interior mm -hmm. and he was a former Air Force pilot mm -hmm. they started working on it on an e-car an experimental car back in the 30s and in the 40s it took on it went on hold uh, at, for World War II sure. but after World War II this former Air Force pilot who was working for Ford Motor Company yeah and they put in charge of designing the interior made sure that as you sit in that car everything is at your fingertip from the teletouch transmission to the radio to all the dials mm -hmm. it even has a floating um, speedometer. speedometer and that is that is just too cool so it, you do feel like you must be in a in an aircraft uh, based on his design yeah so it was very unique and interesting visiting with him. absolutely well that's awesome well eric thank you so much for bringing out uh, your Edsel today. If you want to find out more about Eric, you can visit www.ericedsel.com. So for Eric Edsel, Eddie the Edsel, and Alex LaFreese, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on The Open Road.